Hey guys, welcome to Renderides. It's been a while since the last video and I'm sorry about that, but instead of coming up with excuses, I thought I'd rather make it up to you with a very stylish scene this time. So this is what we're gonna be creating. Before we start, I just wanna give you a heads up that most of the models used in this video are downloaded from Blendswap for the sake of a speedier workflow. I mean, remaking stuff that I can already get makes no sense to me. So I'll put the models used in this video in the description for you to download and use in your own scenes. Okay, to start off, we're gonna add a plane for the ground and scale it up by 10. Then we're gonna subdivide it and give it around 30 cuts. Now let's add a subsurf modifier and subdivide it twice here. Let's add a displacement modifier to add some bumps to our ground. Just click on this new button here to make a texture to control the displacement. And I'm going to set the strength to around 0.2 because we want the bumps to be little. Let's also apply the scale of our terrain by hitting Ctrl A and then selecting this option. Now we're ready to add some bumps. So let's go over to the texture panel over here and change the type to clouds. Then change the noise basis to improve Perlin, size to around 1 and depth to 5. This should give us a terrain as such. One extra step that I did was to sculpt some high lens on the right because I thought it would look better if the area had some elevation. Let's now populate this terrain with some vegetation. But first, let's add a new collection and start working on the grass models. Since I wasn't going for realism with this scene, I just started with a plane, added some loop cuts and moved some edges around with proportional editing turned on. Now let's duplicate this and change it up a little bit, join them together, duplicate them again and keep making it thicker and more random. Finally, make more variants like this model, more models equals more variation. Now let's add these grasses all over our terrain. And we're obviously not going to put them all by ourselves, so let's make a new particle system and name it something like grass. Change the type to hair, turn on advanced, and down here under render, set the render as the collection and select the grass collection as the instance collection. Also turn on object rotation and pick random. I'll put the rest of the settings on screen right now which I used for the final scene. Or you could just play around with it a little bit to get the results that you need. I also use the particle texture to have an extra control over it but it's the first time I'm using it myself so it would be better if I link another tutorial for it in the description for you. I learned this technique from Gleb Alexandrov's grass field video but I just couldn't be bothered to make it look as good as him. Let's now add some more vegetation. This time we're gonna be adding some bushes. I've linked a blend swap page in the description where you can get these bushes and trees from. So after you download the project, just open it up in another blender instance and just select the stuff that you need and hit Ctrl C and then select copy objects. Now head back over to your main project and just press Ctrl P to paste the copied objects. Make sure to paste them in a new collection named bushes so that we can easily use them as particles on the field later. Speaking of which, let's add them now. Again, just add a new particle system to the field, set it to hair, advanced, render as collection, instance collection to bushes, then turn on pick random and object rotation. If they are turned over like this, just turn on the rotation in the particle settings and set the orientation axis to object Y. This fixed the issue for me. The rest of the settings are shown on the screen right now, so you can just pause the video here and copy them if you want to. Now you might have noticed how everything is white in color right now, so let's fix that. Let's start with the ground material first. Head over to the shading workflow and let's add a new material for our ground. Also make sure to turn off the particles for now because we need to see what we're doing. Oh, and um, I almost forgot about our camera. So let's add a camera and position ourselves somewhere around here and just hit Ctrl Alt Numpad 0 to stamp our camera to this position. Now back to the material. We're just going to set up a simple PBR material using some pre-made textures for this one. I put the link to the textures in the description as well. So let's add an image texture and select the diffuse texture. Now duplicate this texture node and select the AO map. We're gonna multiply both of them and hook the color output up to the base color of the principal shader. Duplicate the nodes again and select the specular, roughness, normal and bump maps. Let's set all of their color spaces to non-color because we don't want Blender to treat them as if they have color because well, they don't. After doing that step, just connect the specular to the specular input and the roughness to the roughness. Connect the normal map to a normal map node and the bump to the height input of a bump node and connect the normal map output to the normal input of the bump node. 
Now set the strength to 0.5 and distance to 0.1 and connect the final output to the normal input of the principal shader. Lastly, we can see how huge the texture is right now. So we're just gonna add a texture coordinate node and a mapping node. Connect the UV to the vector input of the mapping node and set the scale to about 30. Nothing happens right now obviously because you need to connect the vector output of the mapping node to the inputs of all the texture nodes. So after you do that, we can see that the texture is now repeated over the entire plane. Now turn the particle systems back on and see how it looks. Fabulous! But not really cause the grass is all white. So let's go to the grass collection and work on the material for the grasses. Just use a simple principal shader with some color variation for each of them. You can also add some subsurface scattering effect to them to make them look better. Basically, this option gives you the effect of light going into the object a little bit as well, which makes it glow kind of like our earlobes when you point a flashlight towards it. After you're done adding the materials for the grass, take a break. Seriously, don't push yourself too hard. Get back to the video after 15 minutes. I'll wait. Now for some actual scene design. Let's place those trees. I got the tree models from BlendSwap again. We're not going to place them procedurally because uh, we want them to look a certain way from the camera. So I took some tree models from the file with the uh, bush models and placed them mainly on the right side with some random scale and rotation. I took another tree from a different project this time and deleted the leaves from it just to get the trunk and the branches of the tree. From this point on is just your creativity to be honest. Place them however you see fit. I really did rush at this part, which resulted in a badly weighted render at the end. Now here comes my favorite part, the red deer stag. I obviously couldn't make such a cool model in such a short amount of time, but I was lucky to find a whole rigged deer model on BlendSwap. So I decided to open it up and delete all the animations and pose it in a way that looks uh, like she accidentally saw the camera while running down the hill or something. Then I applied the mirror and armature modifiers that came with the model to bake the pose into the model and brought it into our scene. For its materials, I didn't really bother to add textures because they won't be noticed anyway as it is going to be just a silhouette. It. So I just added a brown material with a high roughness to her body, a white material to her antlers and a black color to her eyes which uh, isn't really necessary at all but I felt she needed a soul. Let's now move on to the lighting which we were supposed to take care of ages ago but I forgot to mention it. First up we need a really big aerial lamp with a disc shape facing almost towards the camera from there. Let's set the intensity to something super high like 10,000 to make it seem heavenly. To preview it, we could just go to look dev mode and make it use the scene lights and world lighting. Speaking of which, let's head over to the world material and set the color to something night-ish like dark blue and set the strength to 0.3. That's it for the main lighting but we have a little more than that going on here. Let's add a sun lamp coming in from the left side at a steep angle as such. Set the color to something a little bit warm and the strength to 0.5. We also have another area light on the right hand side with a reddish color and a power of 3000. Now if we check it in the look dev mode, it looks so bad. So what we need for the final fantasy-ish look is some dark magic known as volumetrics. How you'd go about doing that is to add a huge cube to your scene and add a material and remove the surface shader and instead add a principal volume shader to the volume input instead. Then we can change the color to a grayish blue and the density to something very low such as uh, 0.05 or something and the anisotropy to 0.3. This gave me the awesome stylized fog and the huge blooms of light. If you did everything correctly, it should already look something like the final thing in cycles. But you can now do some final tweaks, add some more models and stuff, maybe change the camera angle, maybe, I don't know, change the models. and then we can move on to rendering it. Let's now set up some things for the render. The rendering device was set to GPU, the samples were set to around 2048, the tile size to 256 on both X and Y. I didn't touch the color management as I thought it would be just better to do it in Photoshop instead. But you can use a look of high contrast if you don't want to go through the extra hassle of tweaking the colors. Anyway, the resolution was set to 1920 by 1080. 100%. After setting all this up, just hit F12 and that's it. Now you should have this sexy and stylish scene to show off. That, that was actually kind of hard to say. Not gonna lie. So I hope you learned something from this video or at least enjoyed watching it. If you did, make sure to drop a like so that I know. 
Subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it if you want to get notified about every video I post. If you want any further help or have any questions, ideas or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment because I read every comment and react to it and also reply to it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.